my friends and welcome to another Ice Lakes video. In this video it's my intent to kind of go through the game, show y'all the different aspects of the game in terms of, of the controls, equipment, uh, give you some hints and tips and a bit of a strategy guide on catching fish and doing the tournaments and so what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into it now when you first start the game you'll want to go in and set up your player all right it right now there are only four players available they're pretty plain but that's okay i mean this is about fishing not about looking pretty um you can change the color of your snowsuit i happen to be going with black um we've got a number of different hats available it's a nice ushanka and some other stuff going on and again I just Ostrobothnia huh I'm just going with the basic black we can choose whether he's right-handed or left-handed I happen to be right-handed and then we put in our player name all right and so once we start the game we're gonna be dealing with the equipment so let's take a look at the equipment here now what you have here is you have jigs equipment and baits with jigs, there are three fundamental types of jigs. We've got our small jigs, which are baited. Our medium jigs, which are called balanced jigs, not because they're balanced in terms of size or something like that, but because they sit level. They sit balanced in the water. All right. And then we have our vertical jigs, which hang straight up and down. And as you work them, you know they they bob around and change locations and stuff but each of the jigs you'll see has a little information key and it'll tell us what it's best for ruffy perch roach and chub and then it'll also tell us what it's good for in other words other fish that will bite on it but that the jig is not necessarily preferential for rud bream uh you see prussian carp tench zander so on now as you look at the different jigs You'll notice that this one is primarily ruffy, perch, roach, chub. We look at the next jig. Well, here's whitefish, bream, chub, crucian carp, you see. Next one here, brown trout, roach, ruffy, brook trout. And so the different jigs have different fish that they're particularly attractive to. Now, in addition to the uh, small jigs, we have the, the balance jigs here. So for instance, our blue beast, best for perch, asp, crucian carp, and rainbow trout. And then it also has a good four section like the others. But what's important here is this bottom hook on these balance jigs can be switched out for other hooks that have a lure association with them. And we'll, we'll talk about those in, in just a moment here. That's just something to bear in mind. And then our vertical jigs, which are a metal spoon basically. And, um, you know they have a they have a hook coming off the tail end and again we have the same thing best for chub bream whitefish pike and a good fork category all right so that's just a, a idea of what's going on with the jigs now when it comes to the equipment we've got primarily two types of equipment we've got our ice auger itself all right and then we've got our rods all right well the primary difference with the ice augers is going to be the size of the hole that they drill all right a small medium and large hole and then the speed at which they drill so we come starting out with the light standard you can see smallest fish fits through a hole small width of hole and a high speed drill so it drills a hole real fast but the hole is small all right this is important because when you're ice fishing of course the, f the fish has got to come up through the ice and if the fish is too big he can't come up through that hole well then we've got a, our medium sized hole with a medium speed we've got us uh, the heavy standard which has the biggest hole that you know so that any size fish you catch will come up through it but it's also very slow to drill a hole in the ice with it all right so when we get with something here like the heavy tungsten you'll see that it, it that it it'll allow the biggest fishes through it's got the large width and it's got a slow speed and here the medium titanium medium width medium speed all right so now i don't know necessarily at this time if like the heavy tungsten and medium titanium drill faster than than the standards i would assume they do but i can't tell you for sure 
all right with our rods basically what you'll have is you'll have light medium and heavy rods all right so here for instance this ultralight rod great rod for catching small fish with light jigs very sensitive and fast to use but are not good at catching larger fish all right so let's say for instance we're doing a fishing contest where it's the maximum number of fish the most fish wins well if we were to use that ultralight rod um, and fish the shallow water we could catch tons and tons of the little bitty fish because they bite fast and and we'd be able to reel them in real fast and that'd be to our advantage when fishing for the largest number of fish but on the other hand for instance if we were to take the heavy classic here not very sensitive or quick to use but endures even the weight of the biggest fish if we were fishing a contest that was about the greatest weight of fish and we were going to deep water with a big hole and and fishing for instance for a real heavy pike or white fish or lake trout something like that this would be a good rod because we'd be guaranteed not to lose that fish bring them out all right but and we we start out with the medium standard okay and you can, I like the, the heavy pro here. It's just a good old fashioned stick. I like that. <laughs> but all right, now we go to baits. Now we have three kinds of bait ideas here. All right. We have live bait, which is fly larva. And each of these based on, on their color, so you can tell them apart, is tuned to a different collection of fish. So the one that we start with, the red bait is best for roach, perch, bream and chub, which are all smaller fish. But it'll also work for Xander, Whitefish, Crucian Carp, etc. Okay. And each one has its focus. Here, here you can see it's a different set of fish for each and every one. And some of them they get more expensive as they go, with the most expensive being the green. And that's good for rainbow trout, whitefish, perch, and asp, etc. Now, secondly, we've got lures. These are things, these are pellets we drop in the water to attract fish to the area so that we can catch them. All right, and again, they're tuned to different fish. We start out with the brown doe, roach perch, Prussian carch and carp and tench, okay? All the way up through the expensive stuff, the sparkle night for brook trout, brown trout, chub, and crucian carp, okay? But then what's important here, especially with, with specifically for the balanced lures, is the hooks. As you can see, we've got hooks that have different color attractants on them, all right? And they likewise are tuned for different fish. So the standard, which is what we start with, can be used with all baits and, and jigs that have an exchangeable hook. But then we take something, for instance, like uh, the green bomber here, best for bream, ruffy, perch, and pike. So I've got it because of course I, I like fishing the pike. And I've also got the meteor here for pike, roach, salmon, and whitefish. So. I tend to use the balanced lure with the meteor or the green bomber when I'm fishing for the greatest weight of fish because it picks up them big old fish. But so there's just a rough idea about the jigs, the equipment, and the baits. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the basic gameplay. Now we can do practice tournaments, basically a tournament for total weight, uh, total amount of fish caught total amount of perch or roughy or pike biggest fish the three biggest fish most different species only perch only trout only pike only uh, more, more mishka now these are the, the the short jigs and then there's also only balanced which are the medium sized jigs you know the longer ones and these basically give you a chance to practice the different styles of tournament fishing without necessarily having to do the tournaments now if you want to earn money in the game you want to use free fishing because you can just go in, you can fish to your heart's content. Now, we have map settings, evening, morning, noon, okay, and we've got seasons, winter, spring, autumn, okay, no summer obviously because there's not going to be any ice on in the autumn, and then we have basically our, our fishing limits that we would be setting if we were doing, for instance, uh, total amount perch, we could change how much time we'd have to fish okay but so I'm gonna pick a lake here that's a good lake for y'all to start with which is Moose Lake Moose Lake is a really nice lake because it's got some great holes for some decent fish we're gonna do the free fishing all right or is it here let's see free fishing and we're gonna set this I think for noon we're gonna fish winter and let's go on in there.
Now, when we start, what we'll find is that we have a, a start line here, okay? And usually somewhere along there, we'll also have a little booth here, a fresh fish booth. And if we click this guy, you'll see that it'll allow us to sell the fish that we've caught. It'll also allow us to buy gear, all right? So let me just check and see what I got for baits here. Okay, I've got 15 of the red flies. I'm going to pick myself up some of the brown dough. And we're ready to rock and roll. Now I've got the lightest of the um, augers here. But normally when you start a, a tournament, what you'll have is you'll have a green circle with all your participants. A start pistol will go off and you'll run out and you find your place. Now the first thing to know for controls is that M will bring up your large map. And if you click the information tab down here in the corner, it'll tell you what species are present in the lake, the lake's maximum depth, the largest fish you've taken from this lake, all right, and then what the rewards are for whatever style of fishing you're doing. In this case, gain money and free fishing by selling your fish in the market. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing is if we click on this little icon down here in the corner, it'll show us the depth map for the lake, both above here in the top right and here on the left. The darker the color, the deeper the water. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to this spot right there. All right. So let's uh, get ourselves going. W, A, S, and D to move. Use your right mouse button to change which way you're pointing. And we're going to come on over to this deep spot over here. Now, basic rule of thumb is the deeper the water, the bigger the fish. All right, let's zoom in, make sure we're getting in there good. All right, right in here. Now, this left button here will cause you to see which of the augers that you have. Okay, so you can switch augers. And the right button will actually cause the drilling of the hole. There we go, and it'll stick her in the snow. Way to go. Now, it starts us out by default with our little mormishka or whatever it's called. We just we just call them stubby jigs where I'm from. But on the left side here, we can see this is our depth. It shows us what kind of bottom we got. We got a sandy bottom here. We've got a total depth in this lake of 102 feet. That is not the depth of necessarily of the location you're in, and that's important to know. All right. Up top, it'll show what kind of fishing we're doing. We happen to be doing free fishing. It'll show us the rewards here. Or here it'll give us our temperature, and here it'll give us um, how fast we're moving when we're running through the snow. All right, over here on the right with these icons, the first one will allow us to choose a rod. Okay, we've only got one rod, so that's all we can use. The second icon will allow us to choose which kind of jigs we're going to use. So we've got our mishka, we've got our balanced, and I'm actually going to grab my green goblin which is one that I bought with some of my prize money. All right. It'll take a moment to change it. All right. Now, you see the bottom hook here? See how it's uh, red and yellow? Well, that's the third icon here. That's the different hooks that are available. I'm going to switch to the green bomber, because that's good for pike. All right, and we do not bait these guys. You cannot bait these particular type of lures. All right, and then down here, this is where our bait would be if we were using the Mamishka. All right, and then down here at the bottom, this is where our different lures are. Now, it just so happens that I'm in the mood to chase some pike, so I think I should have one here that's interesting for pike, and if not, well, we'll just toss in the brown dough. Okay. We're just going to toss in some brown dough. We're going to select that by clicking it. Click OK. Now, down here on the bottom, this first icon will cause you to pull up stakes and leave your location. The second icon will cause you to bait any baitable hook. The third icon will allow you to drop your lures into the water. And this is what actually causes you to drop your line. Now, you'll notice that our ice hole has iced over. Now, we can click on this to cause it to use the slush scoop to clear the hole, or we can hit R to do the same thing, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to drop some bait down. 
right? And then I'm going to click, and it's going to drop down the hole. Now on the left side here, you can see your lure, and we can adjust the depth that we're fishing at based on that. I happen to want to take it all the way down to the bottom, as deep as it'll go. All right. I'm going to hit R to make sure there's no slush in our hole. And now I'm going to use my mouse and pointer to grab a hold of my rod. And we're going to make some movement. To, to fish with jigs, you want movement. Now, when a fish bites, you're going to want, it'll, you'll be able to tell by the tip of your rod bouncing. Okay? It might be very subtle. It might be very strong. You can do a counter pull, a straight up pull, to try to hook the fish. But I suggest you use the F key in order to hook your fish. Because a lot of times you've got to respond real fast to get him. All right, but I'm hoping for a pike here. There he is. I don't know if you saw that. The tip of a rod bounced twice, and we caught us a little perch. All right, it'll drop him on the ice. If you were using a bait of mamishka, you'd need to add your bait again now. But instead, since we're using the balanced one, we don't have to do that. We're just going to drop him back down. I'm going to clear the slush. Because the slush will interfere with the movement of your line. And so you can move your line left and right, or you can move it up and down. We're going to jig up and down. Now, I suggest grabbing a hold of your rod farther up, simply because if you grab it down here at the bottom, when you hit the bottom of the screen, you can't make much in the way of movement. If you hit it up here, you can pull your rod way down and drop your lure deeper and pull it up higher, see Gives you a better range of movement. There he is. Now this is a better fish because you saw how hard it bobbed. There we go. We got us our pike. All right. Now let's talk for a few moments about strategy. Basically, you have three different kinds of tournaments that you can encounter here in the game. The first tournament is for the maximum weight of fish. Catching the heaviest weight total in fish and for that you want to fish these bigger fellas and so for that you want to fish deeper water you want to use something that's rigged for bigger fish like my like my guy here because you're trying to catch pike you're trying to catch the biggest perch you're trying to catch white fish you're trying to catch um uh, brown trout and and other large fish um, on some of the other maps, there are some really big eels, but you're aiming for the biggest fish, and, and the balanced jig seems to be the best when you're after the big fish, especially if you're after the pike. The other thing is when you're trying to catch the big pike as a way to do it, um, you want to go to new deep water spots pretty quickly. Ooh, now this guy's going to be too big for the hole. See? That fish was, was a monster pike, probably about 9 pounds, and he was too large to fit through our little hole here, and so we lost him. All right. Now the second type of fishing we can do is we can be trying to go maximum species. Now when you're going maximum species, that's when you're going to want to make sure that you've got at least two of each kind of, of bait. They're, you know, the mamishkas as well as the balanced. You can also add in your, your little guys there, but it's your combination of your different mamishkas along with your different larvae as well as fishing different depths that's going to cause you to catch as many different species as possible. So I'll fish with my balanced rig until I pick up a big pike, a couple of big, you know, a big perch, uh, uh, you know, maybe a white fish or whatever. And then I will fish that same deep depth with my mamishka until I pick up a couple of different species. Then what I'll do is I'll go to the shallowest water and fish because in the shallow water, you're, you're going to pick up little bit different species what species you pick up will be based on the depth of your of your line so going to different areas in the lake that where the water's maximum depth is different is going to have a big impact on what species you catch and their size okay and then fishing at different depths in those locations is going to have a lot of impact 
on what species you catch. So fish in the midwater here with our balanced lure, we picked up that Xander. Though if we were fishing with Ramishka, for instance, we might pick up a carp in here. We're going to catch one more here in the midwater. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change our locations so that we're changing our fishing depth based on location as opposed to based on how deep we're running our line. Now you can side to side, you can jig up and down. I found that side to side jigging tends to attract more of what I'd call the panfish, the roach, the perch, the the little roughies and that kind of stuff. And the up and down jigging tends to attract the more aggressive species. Okay, but what we're gonna do is click our little auger here and pull up stakes. So we'll pick up our fish and all our gear. And we're going to go to some shallower water. We're just going to come straight over here. And we're going to go to the second deepest water. So you'll see that on the map here, there are four shades of color. If I pull the map up and we go to our depth map, come on depth map, there we go. You'll see we got a super light blue, which is the shallowest. Then it goes a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper. We're going into the second depth, okay? And now that we're here in the second depth, we're going to drill our hole. And we're going to fish as though we were going for the maximum number of fish, a contest that had the maximum number of fish. So we've got one kind of contest, the maximum weight total of fish. We've got another kind of contest, the maximum uh, species, as many different species as possible. Then we've got the most fish and then of course we've got the largest fish or largest three fish but what we're going to do is we're going to change over to the red devil all right we're going to bait that up with our red worms and then we're going to bait our hole with our brown doe now, all of these things are focused on perch and roughy, all right? A little dude wiggling around there. Now, it's very important to remember, you have to bait, manually bait your uh, mamishka in between each of your, of your catches because it's not like Fishing Planet where it does it automatically. All right, well, let's clear the hole. Let's drop our bait down there. Let's drop our line, and this is very shallow. And we're going to pull her down all the way to the bottom because we're focused on perch. And we're going to get to jigging. Now the fish here at this depth are going to be smaller than the fish that we were catching out there in the deep water. And it's going to be primarily perch and uh, probably roach and roughy. Now if a fish bites that's too light to activate your, your rod... You won't notice, and if you get a, go a long time without a bite, bring it up, because you might have a, have a little roughy on there. But there we go. So there's our roach. Now you notice there was no bait on there. All right, so we'll pull her back up again. You see there's no bait. You can catch fish without the bait, but the bait definitely makes a huge difference in how rapidly you catch them. Let's drop her down. Again, I'm going to pull it as deep as I can get it and just go back to jigging. We're going to clear our hole. And this time I'm going to side to side jig just because I want to show you that jigging in either, either one of the two directions does make a difference. There we go. There, a little perch. And we'll lose our bait every time. And if we miss a fish, we'll we may lose some or all of our bait off of our hook. But so if I was fishing for the maximum number of fish, this is the way I would set up. Second to deepest or second to shallowest water, red worms. Little mamishka like this. And fishing right down on the bottom for perch and roughy. Or I mean uh, perch and roach. And I'd probably side to side jig because it does seem most interesting to the roach and the perch. 
but you can go through your bait pretty quick. Bait him back up. When you're after the biggest fish, I suggest you use your balanced lure, that you use a specialized treble hook for whatever species it is that you're going after, that you likewise use a specialized attractant for whatever it is you're going after, and you've got to know the depth of your fish. All right, down on the bottom is where we're going to fish for um, for pike, where we're going to fish for perch. Midwater is where we're going to find the zander. We're going to find the um, the uh, carp. Oh, between midwater and deep is where we're going to tend to find uh, whitefish and possibly brown trout. I notice if I just let it sit there, little or nothing happens because it's not interesting to the fish. See? Start jigging. Clear my hole here. There he is. As soon as I start digging and jigging, boom, up comes the fish. So very important to keep an active lure to go to active fishing. All right, well, now we've had our, our fishing and we hit the end of our tournament time. We've got to run like crazy to get back to our finish line because that's the way it works. We get our starting pistol and then you've got to be inside the finish line when you when you run out of time. So usually in our last one minute, 30 seconds, it depends on how far we are away. I tend to cause my fishing to move slowly, progressively closer and closer to our finish. We'll run into the green circle that'll appear here, and when it ends, we'll get our results. But we're going to just take these few fish that we caught. We're going to bring them on over to this fella here, and we're going to sell them. You notice we caught eight fish for a total of 6.47 pounds, and it's worth 29 credits. So we'll sell those and free fish, and that's how, that's how you can make your money to make sure you stay in supplies and stuff. Tournaments are where you're going to make your real money, all right? Now, if you want to see tournament fishing, um, I've got videos I'm putting up of, of the very first tournament, um, which I won, by the way. But uh, the, uh, the the tournaments usually have between three and five legs, each between 30 and 45 minutes. And uh, you just you do the tournaments, and if you win, well, the prizes are pretty substantial, usually somewhere between 3,000 to 5,000 credits, which is very important if you're trying to get up the credits to, for instance, you know, buy this guy here, the like, you know, the medium standard or the uh, the heavy standard. The heavy standard is the one that I'm after, so I'm probably going to gonna fish a tournament, see if I can manage uh, a 5,000 credit tournament so I can buy the, the heavy standard as well as buying myself the UL Orange, all right, because I want that for, for when it's maximum fish, number of fish caught, I want my medium standard for regular fishing, and I'll eventually get like a heavy classic or something for when I'm fishing heaviest fish. But all right, guys, there is a little bit of insight and input about the game. Up here in the left corner, we have the pause button, ba -ching, and that'll bring us out and allow us to look at the overall map some information about what we've been doing, adjust our settings, restart our map, or continue or quit. And I'm going to quit. All right, guys, so I shall see you in the next one. I hope that this was informative, and I hope you enjoyed. I'm out. Peace.